Agents are everywhere in the AI landscape these days, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger. So today, I thought we'd tame that little beast. They look very scary to build, but they're really not. In under 30 seconds, we're going to build our first agent. Follow along and you'll have this with me. Let's go. Okay, okay. Before you start the clock, let's get started in a brand new project. We'll call it HaikuBot. We'll come over here. And the reason I say that is there's two things that are going to matter. I need a virtual environment. And the second thing I'm going to do is install something that's kind of a good hygiene practice of where do I keep my keys? So it's just good hygiene. I'm just going to do these two things. Okay, so I need to create a virtual environment and activate it here, as well as I need to create a .env file. All right, great. It's going through. It's creating my virtual environment. It's activating it. It's creating an env file. All right, so it's that easy. Now I have a really clean kind of environment to be able to work from. And from here, we're going to get started. Let me let me clean these windows up. All right, ready? Let's go. New file. I am going to paste in this bootstrap. That's the thing that's going to read the env file. We'll get there in a second. OK, I noticed that he's upset with me. So I need that .env here you're seeing, and also OpenAI agents. Excellent. That should get us somewhere. That's our agent. Not quite, but we'll pretend. OK, so that's pretty much the thing that we're going to try to run here. Let me put in better instructions, haiku generator, haiku about the topic. And then we want to run our excellent. Oh, why did it go back to the lowercase? Almost, almost, not quite. It should give us this API key. Give me a second. All right, hopefully API key in place. Hey, silent algorithms crafting worlds with streams of code. Ideas come alive. OK, stop the clock. I don't know how long that was. Uh, but really, briefly, I'll just drive you through very, very simply what's going on here. I think you kind of heard me talk through it. We defined an agent. We'll go through more of this in just a second, so I won't kill it. We define an agent just by giving it a name and what its instructions are. You might think of this as the, the system prompt, the system information that it needs to follow. And then we've run this agent with a prompt. So that's extra information that'll be sent in. You might imagine that as the user prompt coming in. And then we've captured that in the haiku variable and printed it out. That's it. Easy peasy. How hard was that? Think of an agent as one job description and one brain. That's pretty much kind of the contract that we have with ChatGPT. ChatGPT is using GPT-40, for example, as the brain behind the scenes. And its responsibility or its motive is to have a conversation with us. We ask a question. Its job is to attempt to answer that question and give us that answer back. Simple, right? So in the haiku example that we just built, we have one system that has a motivation, which is to write a haiku, and one brain, ChatGPT-40, to deliver that information. And that's it. No tools, nothing else. Easy peasy. And that is an agent system. It works perfectly fine. If you want to create communications with LLMs and those kinds of things in any of your applications, you absolutely can use these agent systems for that. It's really what they're designed for. Now, where it really gets interesting is when you introduce tools. Uh, what's a tool? Okay, Tooling would be any kind of functionality that is executable by these systems. So that gets a little circular. Let's say we have an agent and you give him a web search tool. That agent now has the ability to search the web. He won't always search the web. It's just a tool, very much like all of us have a toolbox at our house. And in that toolbox is a hammer, but we don't go home every night and hammer something. That's very much what an agent is doing. And it's really the brain, the LLM behind the scenes, that figures out when those tools need to be used. And that's where it really gets quite exciting, is these agents themselves are capable of determining, hey, at this moment, it would benefit us if we actually used this tool or that tool. So you might give a collection of tools to an agent, and it determines which one to call when. And that's why these systems become probabilistic, is you don't really know their pattern to solving the problem, just like you wouldn't with a person. Now, one agent 
can do a lot of things. It can solve a lot of tasks. But when your task starts having multiple stages, we usually break those into multiple agents. And now when you have multiple agents, you usually use a coordinator. And that's another agent over the top that knows when to call each one of those other agents kind of as a tool itself. So it starts to coordinate the communication to get its motivation complete. So its motivation may be complete this whole system, get information from the web, call the other system that knows how to compile it into a cute list, give that cute list to a system that knows how to send it to the printer, and then say thank you very much back to the user. That might be three sub-agents that are doing the work and the coordinator that's trying to produce that result. And it just starts using its brain. Again, every one of these agents has its own brain to say, well, who should I call next? And that's how these systems work. And it seems like it's very scary and a bunch of wiring that's gonna have to be written to make all that work. But that is what these agent frameworks are for. And that's why it's so elegant. The LLMs themselves do the vast majority of the work across the board. So LLMs, when you send them a prompt, you can also say, and I have these tools, and allow the response from the LLM to tell you what tools to call. And then the agent framework hears that as a response and says, oh, okay, I'll use that tool, get the results, send all of that back to the LLM. So you might have multiple kind of iterations inside of one agent before you get anything out just while it's calling tools and figuring out what to do next. So all of this atomic behavior we're wrapping up in a term we call agents. And these agent systems that we create all of a sudden can really produce a lot of very surprising effects because they're atomic. I think the best way to kind of learn about this is we should dive in and build one, right? All right, I wanna to talk to you for a second, just a moment about the OpenAI Agents SDK. That's the one we're using, as I mentioned. And this is an SDK that OpenAI has released. It's a lightweight SDK, so it's not that much. It doesn't have that many parts, moving parts over the top of it. It's not super opinionated, but it does have a pattern that makes it a little bit simple, as we just saw, to create an agent. So it doesn't mean that it has less power. It's just a little bit less boilerplate because they're taking care of some of that stuff. They do have ways that you can use any models. You don't have to use the OpenAI. This is an open source framework. You can go take a look at how they're doing it. There's a lot to really like about what they're doing in this space. And admittedly, it is very similar to many of the SDKs out there that are doing agents these days. I just wanted to kick the tires on this one. I haven't really had a chance to play with it. But if you come out to the OpenAI Agents SDK documentation site, you'll see all of the different things they have. They have streaming capabilities, different models that you can use. You have voice agents that you can integrate with. We'll take a look at the tracing. So one of the things is built into this SDK is the ability to watch and, and kind of create a set of tracings to see what's happening inside of your, your stack inside of the, the agent system that you're creating. And also there's a way to even visualize what's going on inside of your agent system so that it can go through and create a diagram that's similar to this of any agent system that you build. That's also very useful just to be able to understand what the interplays might be. So it's got a lot in it, but we're gonna stay pretty high level today to just kind of move into it so that we understand when to write agents, how to write them, and kind of a few examples of how they're useful. Also worth mentioning is that we're using Visual Studio Code GitHub Copilot as our mechanism for agentic changing. As you'll see in GitHub Copilot, it feels very similar to what Cursor is doing. It's not quite the same. There are some places where I prefer Cursor, but really very few. I would say this, its agentic behavior is excellent largely. So that isn't where the differentiation is. So if you have a chance to play with this one, I would say give it a shot. Enough of that, I just wanted to show you the tools that we'll be using so that you kind of understand the comparisons of what we're showing off here. Let's move in and have some fun. Okay, okay, let's have some fun. This is actually where it starts to get um, pretty meaningful from, from an agent standpoint. What we're gonna do is work on handoffs and handoffs in this OpenAI Agents SDK is basically a way that you can route to a different agent, essentially. It's their conversational point of saying, here's all the context, do what you're supposed to do, tell me your response. So pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and duplicate this, call it handoffs. All right, so here we are in handoffs, and I think what I'll do is I'll just destroy some of this stuff. 
to make it simple so that you can see what's going on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to define um, our triage agent first. And our triage agent is going to be called triage agent. That seems pretty reasonable. Ah, let's just go ahead and vibe code this a little bit. Hey there, so I'm trying to build a little handoffs application in this handoffs PY file. And I have a triage agent, and his job is going to be to hand off questions that are asked to different kinds of agents. And I think what I'd like to do is have different attitudes or different personalities that answer different questions. So if there's a question about something philosophical or interesting in the world or metaphysical, something like that, maybe that's a, a overblown philosophy professor that includes a lot of quotes and some other curious, silly stuff. Feel free to put their system instruction any way you like. Um, I want another one that is a mechanic that really knows about the nuts and bolts of just about anything you might ask about, uh, but doesn't communicate completely or well. He just is kind of telling you all the technical bits and parts of something, but it is the correct answer. And then let's do a psychology agent as well, and maybe a 1980s valley girl agent that answers something else. So I want you to describe these, name them appropriately, and create very funny, interesting system instructions that will create really different personalities. Uh, also, I want those to be added to the handoffs array in the triage agent. Let's take a look at what it did. Let's keep everything it's got and say, okay, what did it create for us? It created Professor Quibble, Mechanic Mike, Dr. Freudette, Valley Val, and Triage Agent that is basically saying you're a triage agent. Sole purpose is to determine the nature of the user's question and hand it off to the most appropriate agent. Let's drop things. Okay, and it is actually going through the definitions here of who it should hand off to. That's fine, that's actually not bad. But there's a way inside of the OpenAI SDK that there are handoff rules here. So this handoff description is a way to describe when you are answering the question. So when something would be hand off, handed off to you. And the idea is, and this happens a lot in these agentic systems, is this agent is given all of these different tools or actually other agents as tools. And its job is really to go introspect those tools and kind of look at them and say, okay, I'm gonna look inside of you so that I understand what you do so that when I talk to my brain, I can more meaningfully figure out whether or not you would be a good fit. And this is really actually one of the magic keys to the way that all these agent systems work is MCP and A to A and standard agent systems like this. They're using the descriptions of the different parts themselves to determine what's happening inside of. And that way we don't have to write any code on the outside to say what we're seeing here. If the question is this, do that. And if the question is that. So I'm, I want to remove all this. This isn't really where that belongs. Otherwise I have to keep updating his input. What we'd like to be able to do is just dynamically be able to add new agents to him and those agents are used when he has access to them and is not when he doesn't so i'd be able to give him a brand new one that's a cat and the cat is the one that answers whenever there's anything to do with fish in fact let's try doing that now okay so i've created cat who is cat cat and told him you're a cat who's also a cat answer the questions as if you were a cat use cat like behaviors and mannerisms but you only speak cat <laughs> and I've given him the handoff description of any questions about fish or other cat related topics should be directed to cat cat. And this is the kind of thing that we need in each one of these descriptions. So what I'll just go do is I'll go steal these. All right, there we go. Nice and simple. They had already written all of the rules for me. So we'll just leave it at that. And I haven't given him cat cat yet. All right. So what we need to do is we need to ask a question and I'm just gonna put the question here for now. What's the meaning of life? Sounds wonderful. All right, so let's give this a run and see what happens here. We are asking, what is the meaning of life? So we believe it'll go to our philosophy professor, but maybe not. So who did it go to? Professor Quibble. Ah, fascinating query. The meaning of life has long perplexed and most profounded minds a question as eternal as the stars themselves. Excellent. Okay, we kind of know what you're about. So let's see, what's our next question? How do I fix my car if it won't start? Seems pretty obvious. All right, it went to mechanic Mike. Won't start, battery, starter, ignition, battery, check voltage, 12 to 14 volts, corrosion on terminals, clean, starter, solenoid clicks. So there we go, that actually works quite well. And you can tell as we ask different questions, uh, we really are engaging different agents to answer that question, different personalities. What is the best fish? <laughs> so what does Cat Cat have to say? Meow. Mmm, tuna. Brr, tuna. Meowrific. Perfect. 
Remember I told you about the fact that there was some tracing that you'll be able to do to figure out what's going on inside of these systems? I wanted to look at that real briefly here before we get into an agentic system that kind of could get circular. This one is kind of functional enough to be able to look at and make sense of. And the one we just ran was talking to CatCat, Cat, and that's this trace. So this trace, if we go into it, will show us that the first thing that started up was our triage agent. That was our first guy, if you recall. He's got some responsibilities. If we go into him, he's got his system instruction here. And what's the best fish was the question, right? And then he, his response here in the end was just simply transfer to CatCat. Cat. So that's what's coming out of this tool is transfer to CatCat. Cat. Here's the handoff to CatCat Cat, so you can see which one it's selected out of it. And this is CatCat. Cat. You are CatCat. Cat and all of the other information. He got the input from the user as well. And he, this is his output and that's it. So I just thought it was cool to, to see this. Hopefully we'll come back and look at this when we build a little bit more complex one. By the way, let's go build a little bit more complex. So that was fun. That was two different sets of agents, a very, very simple one with just one agent and another one that showed you how agents can hand off to one another. To be perfectly honest, there are two more agent systems that I built, but I can't show them here as this one already got pretty long. And I think this is digestible enough to get people started in kind of how to build my very, very first agent system and coordinate a few things. I think this is really interesting. That last one, particularly when you're handing off for different scenarios is really useful. But the next video has several very enjoyable parts. It's going to have a human in the loop agent set where there's a series of agents doing a job and trying to evaluate some information. And when they don't have quite enough information, they come back and ask the user for more input or more guidance, and then go off and do a little bit more work. That one's kind of fun. And then the last one, the piece de resistance, is the one where I go and build an entire agent system that is circular and iterative and very probabilistic and actually kind of gets into a kind of a runaway scenario that's worth seeing. I don't know if I spent too much money on that one. The, the proof will be tomorrow when I can pull up the numbers on it. But that one is interesting that it pulls all of the different parts together, including tool use. And tool use is just a very important aspect to these agent systems. You can't miss that one. Subscribe now and you'll see it when it drops. But thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.